Second Chronicles chapter number five. I'm just going to read two verses, verses 13 and 14. The Bible says, It came even to pass as the trumpeters and the singers were as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lift up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praise the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever, that then the house was filled with a cloud, even the house of the Lord, so that the priests could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We certainly do thank you for the good singing. We thank you for the time of fellowship before the service. Lord, we thank you for the good devotion on prayer. And Lord, that's one thing we're all guilty of. We don't pray enough. But Lord, we're thankful that you wink at our ignorance and you do honor prayer. And God, I pray that, Lord, in these days we'd see a move of God. Lord, like nothing we've seen or even dreamed of. God, I pray that you'd set down upon this place just like you sat down on the Mount Horeb. God, uh, even the animals and the beasts uh, trembled when they approached the Mount of God. God, I pray that your presence would be so real that sinners would quake, Lord, and they'd come and fall and repent and trust Christ. God, I pray your presence would be so real that backsliders would be reclaimed. The saints of God would reverence you and respect like you so richly deserve. Lord, I pray it even begin around here tonight. Now, Father, I pray that, Lord, you'd give our preachers traveling mercies that will be coming in for camp meeting. I pray that, Father, you would fill their minds and their hearts with the with the things of God. And Lord, when they stand and preach, may they proclaim the things of God exactly as you intend for them to be proclaimed. I pray, Father, that you would work in our midst and stir our hearts. And God, I pray that, Lord, uh, all of Florence would know that God has sat down amongst his people. Now, Father, bless now. Use this unworthy vessel. Help us tonight to take the to heart the word of God and God may we truly uh, embrace you like never before bless now we'll thank you for it for it's in Jesus holy name we pray amen and amen this is a wonderful chapter and in this chapter we find several things we find first of all the temple is finished in verse number one look what happens Thus all the work that Solomon made for the house of the Lord was finished. Now that's just a small little verse and it just rings, well, the temple was finished. What you do not realize is how many years David prayed that God would let him build the temple, but yet he was a man of bloody hands. He was a man of war. And God told him no, but he said, I'll let your son build the temple. You don't understand uh, how much David worked to amass all the materials. Uh, You don't understand that it took seven years uh, to complete the temple of the house of God. Uh, 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 Can I say all the planning, all the praying, all the work uh, comes to fruition in verse number one. Uh, It got finished. Uh, Aren't you glad uh, that God... uh, will one day say it is finished like he did on the cross uh, and he'll take his church out of here uh, and take us to glory uh, and we'll bask in his presence forevermore. Uh, But in this chapter we find uh, Solomon uh, 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 finishes the temple. Can I say we also find that the treasures of the house of God are placed uh, in the house of God. Look again at verse number 1. And Solomon brought in all the things that David... uh, his father had dedicated and the silver and the gold uh, and all the instruments put he among the treasures uh, in the house of God. Uh, Can I say all the things that were precious uh, 
uh, uh, were brought to the house of God. Everything that was used in worship, uh, everything that had dwelled in tents uh, and curtains, uh, a tabernacle, uh, now has a permanent dwelling uh, in the house of God. I remember when we finished this building uh, and, and we started uh, uh, the service uh, over in the old building uh, and we had uh, 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 the men uh, bring the pulpit from the old building into this building uh, and had the service here. Uh, uh, it kind of uh, reminds me uh, they brought the things that were valuable and important uh, for worship and placed into the house of God. Uh, what a blessing. Uh, can I say that uh, we also find in this chapter that the priests uh, are tractable. Uh, that means they were obedient. Uh, we won't read it, but in verse number 6, we find they were obedient to sacrifice. Matter of fact, the Bible says they sacrificed so many uh, animals they couldn't be numbered. Uh, 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 we also find they were obedient in sanctification in verse number 11. Uh, you see, after uh, they'd sacrificed all those animals, uh, uh, my dear friends, uh, 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 that blood was all over them. The smell of that was all over them. Uh, and they had to go wash themselves and cleanse themselves uh, and put on their priestly garments uh, and then were sanctified and anointed for their priestly work. Uh, we've seen the priests were tractable. Then we find in verse 13, there's thanksgiving. Look what it says in verse 13. It came to pass, as the trumpeters and singers were, were as one, made one sound to be heard in praising, and here it is, thanking the Lord. We find thanksgiving. Mm -mm. Mm, can I help you something? We'll never thank the Lord enough. How do we thank Him for dying for us? How do we thank Him for washing away all of our sin? How do we thank Him for putting our name on the Lamb's book of life? How do we thank Him for the hope of eternity and uh, uh, knowing that our name's written down in heaven and that we'll uh, uh, dwell in the mansions in that celestial city, New Jerusalem? How do you thank Him for that? How do you thank Him for daily loading you with benefits? How do you thank Him for uh, uh, always being there, a friend that's sticking closer than a brother, uh, how do you thank Him when you find yourself in the ash pile and everything's been tore up, uh, but there's a fire shut up in your bones uh, that won't cause you to quit uh, uh, because what you have is real. Uh, how do we thank God for all of that? Uh, how do we thank Him for the breath that we breathe? How do we thank Him for uh, uh, the money He puts in our pocket and the food in our cupboards and the roof over our head and shoes on our feet and clothes on our back? How do we thank Him for our good families? Uh, how do we thank Him for all that He does for us? Uh, we find there's thanksgiving. And then we find there's the token of appearance. Look what happens in verse 13, the latter clause. It says, uh, And the house was filled with a cloud even the house of the Lord. That cloud is just a token or a picture of what really transpired. There was a fog that moved in, and it was the presence of Almighty God. He took up his abode in the house of God, and verse 14 said the priest couldn't even stand to minister. God walked in, and the priest had to walk out. Hmm? Now listen, I've been in some services where God showed up, but I've never been in one where He got so big we had to leave. But I'm longing to see that. Hey, the Bible says He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Uh, and if God did it in that day, God can do it in our day. Uh, and I sure would like to see that much God around the house of God. Uh, I want to preach on this little thought tonight. I want to preach on getting ready for camp meeting. I find in these verses everything it's going to take in order to get ready for camp meeting. And maybe we can just position ourselves to see a little cloud. Wouldn't mind seeing a little cloud. Elijah saw a little cloud about the size of a man's hand. Hmm? It changed that whole part of the country because then it started raining. It hadn't rained in three and a half years. Hmm? I'd just like to see a little cloud of God move in. Hmm? Uh, so how do we get ready for camp? I'm looking around. Some of you aren't ready. Hmm? Now, I know some of you have faced some adversity. I know some of you have been sick. I know some of you have been 
beat upon by your flesh, by the devil. by uh, I mean, the devil's scared to death that God's going to show up around here. You do know that, don't you? Uh, 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 some of you, your, your wind's been knocked out of your sail. Uh, uh, some of you are facing things. Your, your heart's hurt. Uh, 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 you're brokenhearted tonight. Uh, 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 some of you uh, 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 are looking uh, 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 for folks to sit with you, and they're not here, and, and all kinds of things going on. And if you're not careful, you'll hold those things up in an excuse and you won't have camp meetings. Hmm? That's all right. At least somebody's shouting. <laughs> Let her go, Ivy. Doesn't bother me at all. Huh? So how do we get ready for camp meetings? Some have never seen camp meetings. Hmm? Some of us been blessed to see some real camp meetings. Hmm? Brother Phil, we got into one on that Friday night down there in, in Jubilee down there at Brother Rocky's, didn't we? Huh? Lord have mercy. I don't know how Phil made it home. I think he just floated home after that service. Huh? So how do we get ready for camp meeting? Can I say, first of all, it requires adaptation. Look at verse 11. Verse number 11 says, And it came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy place, for all the priests that were present were sanctified and did not then wait by course. It takes adaptation. It takes being prepared. We're going to have camp meeting. You've got to get prepared. Now, we've been announcing it for months. But just like I said earlier, I had a phone call where somebody didn't even know what, when the services were going to be. You know why? Because they're not prepared. Hmm? I've had quite a few say, Preacher, I'm really looking forward to camp meeting. But I've had a whole lot more that hadn't said anything. Because you're not prepared. Now, Brother Josh gave us a little clue on how to start getting prepared. You want to see the bigness of God, it starts with us getting low in prayer. Hmm? we got to ask. God says you have not because you ask not. Hmm? The Bible says, ask and it shall be given to you. Hmm? Seek and you shall find. How much have you been seeking God? How much have you been asking God? to show up in camp meeting. See, it takes being prepared. Before those priests went into the house of God, uh, and before uh, uh, the cloud showed up to where they couldn't minister in the house of God, they sanctified themselves. They'd been set apart for the glory of God. Sometime between now and Friday night, I want you to get in your prayer closet and ask God to set you apart for His glory. God, if I can be used in camp meeting in any fashion, God, use me for Your glory. May not be standing to sing a song. May not be standing to preach a message. Uh, it might be welcoming a visitor. Uh, it might be being kind to somebody. Uh, it might be that God will have you pray with somebody. Uh, it might be that God touches your heart in the middle of a sermon uh, and says go to the altar and you're just obedient and go to the altar and that's the key uh, that breaks the whole thing wide open. Uh, they set themselves apart. They were prepared. They adapted for what was about to transpire. We're going to have camp meeting. It requires adaptation. We've got to be prepared. Now, some of you don't know what to expect, and that's okay. Just be prepared for a whole lot of God. Hmm? If we can have a whole lot of God, the rest doesn't even matter. Hmm? Can I say this? It not only requires adaptation, it requires assembling. Look in verse number 12 says, also the Le Levites, which were the singers, all of them of Asaph, of Heman, of Jeduthon, uh, with their sons and their brethren, being arrayed in white linen, having cymbals and psalteries and hearts, stood at the east end of the altar, and with them a hundred and twenty priests, uh, sounding with trumpets. Sounded like a whole crowd got together. They assembled. I don't mean to be uncool, uh, unkind or uncouth, but 
you're not going to have a camp meeting sitting at the house. Everybody that's ever watched live stream will tell you it's not like being here. And there are certain things that that camera can't pick up. Hmm? You just got to be here. If you're not in your place, you will not have camp meeting. And if you're not in your place, you might grieve camp meeting. They all showed up and were in their place doing their part. And if you don't show up, somebody's got to do their part and your part. And that never works. You've got to be assembled. The Bible says, not forsaking the assembling of yourselves uh, together, so much more as you see the day approaching. What day? The Lord coming. And He's coming. If there's any time we need to be in the house of God, it's now. The devil's pulling out all the stops, and he's not fighting fair. We need help. You know what I find when I get in good camp meetings? I find help. I find inspiration. I find strength. I find something that wells up within me that's not welled up in a long time, and it helps me. And I say, we've got to be assembled. You'll not have camp meeting if you're not assembled. You'll not get the help that God has for you if you don't show up. Now, I know there are times people are providentially hindered. But most of the time, it's because they just choose to do something else. Hmm? There's folks that could be in church tonight, and they're not. There's still some who are sick. There's still some who, who are providentially hindered. But there are quite a few that just chose not to be here tonight. Now, I want to tell you, there are some here tonight who's physically hurting. Hmm? There are some here tonight uh, who have faced grave things this week. They have excuses not to be here, but they chose to be here. You know why? They need help, and the Lord will help them. Uh, you've got to assemble yourselves. I don't know where it came about that being saved, we get to choose when we're going to serve God and when we're not. The Word of God's pretty clear. We're to be in the house of God. Uh, you see the early church in Acts, they met daily. Lord have mercy if I said we're going to meet in the next 60 days every day. Some of you would pass out. Uh, we, we would cleanse the roll at Emmanuel Baptist Church. Hmm? I'd like to see folks make it a week. If we can make it a week, well, let's go for two weeks. And then three weeks. Hmm? People start falling like flies. This is too hard. No, your heart's not where it should be. But they assembled themselves. I'm not asking you to meet 60 days. I'm asking you to come out for three days and put your whole heart in it. And let's see if we can't see God do something that goes beyond Sunday. Amen. Mm. Can I say they adapt it? They were prepared. They assembled. But notice what it takes if we're going to have camp meeting. They were in accord. Look again at verse 13. The Bible says, And it came to pass, as the trumpeters and singers were doing their own thing. Is that what it says? No, as one. To make, how many sounds? One. Mm -hmm. They were in accord. In the epistles, Paul wrote to every church to be of the same mind, to be like-minded, to be of one accord. When we all have the same desire, we all have the same goal, that simply is that Jesus is glorified. There's no telling what he'll do. Hmm? Can I say what happens is when we all have our own agendas, God don't bless the Holy Spirit only blesses when we all have the same agendas. For years I heard preachers say, to be in one accord, you've got to believe exactly the same. How can we do that? We've got some been saved 40, 50 years. got some been saved just a short time. How can we believe the same when some haven't even been taught some, that, some things that other people have already forgotten? It's not about believing all now the common doctrines. We've got to believe alike. But can I say, being in accord is having the same goal, the same desire. And this weekend, our goal and our desire shouldn't be to hear our favorite preacher. Our goal and our desire should be we should hear Jesus through the preachers. And then Jesus be glorified in our lives. Mm -mm. 
they were in accord. They all didn't have their own petty little sanctions they wanted. Hmm? You know why we serve food after the service? Because that way at least you're going to hear some preaching. Hmm? I don't know how many times have a meal, you know, have a service on Sunday, have a meal, and then come back for an afternoon service. Half the crowd don't even come back for the afternoon service because they eat and go home. Hmm? Hmm. Can I say this? And Brother Ray backed me up on this. There are some people who won't come unless they hear there's food. Hmm? That's a sad thing. See, our goal and our desire ought to be, sirs, we would see Jesus. Hmm. Uh, when we get in accord, that's when God shows up. You know how come 41,000 people got saved? Because 100,000 people got in accord asking for the Lord to do something. Uh, did you ever study the book of Acts, chapter number 2? It took those disciples and those 120 in the upper room 10 days to get in one mind and one accord. And when they got in one mind and one accord, guess what? The comforter showed up. And 3,000 souls were added to the church that day. The secret to folks getting saved isn't coming up with a new method to get the gospel out. The secret is for us to get in one accord. We see there's being in accord. Getting ready for camp meeting takes adulation. What is adulation? Adulation is public thanksgiving. Hmm? It's one thing to be thankful in your heart. It's another thing to be publicly thankful. Look what happens in verse 13 again. It says that they made one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. I told you there was something about both those songs those fellows sang tonight. To God be the glory and blessed be the name of the Lord. You know what they were doing? They were praising and thanking the Lord in song. And when we publicly praise God and thank God, God shows up. The Bible says he inhabits the praise of his people. And when you and I begin to praise him publicly, he comes and sits down and pays attention. That's what inhabitant means. He comes and gets in on it. You want to see God show up? Start praising. Start thanking him. Start letting others know you're thankful for all that God's done in your life. When I ask for testimonies and I may feel led to do that this week have a testimony of praise and thanksgiving to God I don't want to hear about your corns hurting you that doesn't glorify God I don't want to hear about uh, 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 all your bills and I don't want to hear about all your problems everybody in here has got problems everybody in here has got things that are, are, are bothering us or been dumped on us but uh, what I want to hear is Jesus being lifted up uh, and when folks begin to praise him and thank him and glorify him, he takes over the service. Hmm. Takes adulation, public thanksgiving. I'm talking about getting ready for camp meeting. And I say getting ready for camp meeting also takes adoration. Look again in verse 13. It said they praise the Lord and they thank the Lord but look what they had to say about the Lord they gave some jubilant praise right here they said for he is good for his mercy endureth forever they are showing their devotion and their love and their adoration for God you know what really touches the heart of God when you start telling folks how much you love him hmm it's one thing to tell about how great he is. It's another thing when it comes endearing. And you start telling how much you love him. When you start letting folks know you love him above all others. When you let folks know that he's the fairest of 10,000 to your soul. When you begin to exclaim and proclaim uh, your total devotion for him. God takes note of that hmm? it amazes me how folks can 
and tell how much they love ball players and tell how much they love movie stars and tell how much they love everything in the world but they have a real problem telling folks how much they love Jesus that's why we don't have revival that's why we don't see 41,000 people saved they're looking for a crowd that will let them know the right way and a, real, and a crowd that's real and that is made known by what we love hmm? I wonder what you're known for what you love wonder what our church is known for and what we love in order to get ready for camp meeting it takes adaptation got to be prepared takes assembling got to be here takes having, being in accord having the same goals and same desires we're coming to hear Jesus uplifted takes adulation public thanksgiving it takes adoration jubilant praise but then it takes the acceptance of God looking again in verse 13 it said then the house was filled with a cloud even the house of the Lord so that the priest could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud for the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God you see God was pleased that the temple got finished God was pleased with all the sacrifices that was offered God was pleased that the priest had submitted themselves in sanctification. God was pleased with those that assembled and those that sang and those that played instruments. God was pleased. God was pleased with the thanksgiving. God was pleased with the praise. God was pleased with all of it. He says, I'm just going to go get in on it. And he did. You see, the difference between going to church and having a church is whether or not God is pleased. God's not pleased when we go through the motions. God's not pleased when we have lip service. Hmm? There are a lot of folks in their relationships go through the motions. It's a whole lot different when there's a spark there. And can I say, when we truly come prepared, excited, and hungry for God, and we're willing to do anything that He bids us to do, and when the occasion falls on us, we let everyone know what He means to us, then He's pleased. That's when He shows up. That's when he changes people's lives. That's when we start looking more like him. And that's when the world takes note that something's happening down there. You want to have a camp meeting? Get prepared. Come ready. Come seeking him. Come praising him. When it's time for congregations, congregational singing, don't be standing there talking to your neighbor. Open that songbook and sing it from the bottom of your heart to the glory of God. Hmm? When the preacher's preaching, egg him on. Just like it was Jesus preaching. Yes, amen, I agree, hallelujah. Get involved in it. When somebody's a singing and it touches your heart and all of a sudden your head starts leaking, hey, let it roll, huh? Hey, God touches your heart uh, and you just need to come and thank him. Uh, come to the altar and thank him and tell him you love him. Uh, hey, get in on it is what I'm trying to say. You'll get out of it what you put into it. Hmm? You see, the reason public housing doesn't work is the people that live there don't own it and don't pay anything to live there. Therefore, they treat it like garbage. About every couple years, the owner's got to go in there and totally gut it and fix it all back up for somebody else to tear it up. But when you own something, and you have to fix it when it breaks, you tend to take better care of it. 
And uh, 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 when you own it, you tend to make sure that everything not only works properly, but looks nice. Mm -mm. Because it's yours. You take pride in it. What can I say? Those that will have camp meeting this week are those that take pride in it. They've got some ownership in it. They have been praying. They have been seeking the Lord. They have been serving God. They want something, so they put something in it, and all of a sudden they're going to have something. Now here's what's going to happen. Boy, I pray God shows up. Oh, I pray. I pray He shows up. But I promise you, there are going to be people absolutely get their soul filled this weekend. You're going to see people act in ways you didn't know they could act. But then there's going to be somebody sitting over in the corner with their mouth open going, what in the world is going on around here? Just sitting there like a knot on a log. Huh? You know why? They didn't get prepared. Hmm? Now, let me give you a little secret. If you're sitting by him, and I'm just picking on you because you're sitting here, which you've been sitting there for 25 years, you know you're going to get picked on, you know? Not 25, 23. I'm getting ahead of myself. If you're sitting by him, and he's the guy that's the knot on a log, hmm? but over here, this pew's having a time. They're slinging snot and shouting and and weeping and having themselves a time and it's the Sahara Desert right here it'd be alright to just pick up your Bible and walk right over here and sit down right here and hope some rubs off on you you know what I'm saying you don't have to get married to the desert I'd run to where there's a fountain uh, but I've got a warning don't sit next to that Cato fella You'll get hurt. Huh? But listen, I believe God wants to send camp meeting. There's been too much that He's aligned up for it. There's some unusual things already taking place. And of course, the devil's fighting. That's always a good sign. He only fights those he fears. It's no accident that so many have been sick leading up to this thing. He's trying to knock the wind out of her sails. He don't know us, does he? Hmm? Uh, but can I say this? God's wanting to do something. Why don't we want him to do something for us? Because hmm? if you want it, it'll be available. I'm trying to quit, but I can't. I know you don't believe this. I grew up in the country. In Britain, you might be you, you might have been too little to remember this. But my grandmother, she was the preacher's wife, lived right next door to the church. It was nothing for people just to show up unannounced. I'm sure you experienced that with your with your mom and your dad. And people would show up, and they'd want a fellowship, sit around and talk for a while. That's what country folks did. They just sat around and talked. That's what, you know, uh, you, there wasn't nothing else to do. You know, nobody was in a big hurry to be somewhere, and, and it wasn't everybody running lights out like they do now. And folks just sit and fellowship. And as the day went on, people would get hungry. Well, there wasn't fast food joints everywhere like there are now. We used to have to drive about a half hour to get a pizza okay and so my grandma would say well I don't have much but let me go in here in the kitchen and see what I got to put on the table well you'd hear in there shuffling around and everything for long the whole table be filled up with food I mean there was all kinds of stuff on there now stuff you all turn your nose up at like like tomato sandwiches and uh, fried bologna and, uh, and there was all kinds of stuff some black eyed peas uh, 
you know, you get hungry, Jim? Huh? All kinds of stuff. There'd be all kinds of stuff, macaroni and tomatoes. There'd be all kinds of stuff on there. There'd be a whole spread from the garden. Uh, I mean, it'd be fresh green onions and tomatoes, and there'd be just everything there, uh, lettuce and watermelons, everything there on the table. There's all kinds of food on the table. Now, my whole point is, if you go to the country, and somebody gets to shuffling around in the kitchen and come put a whole spread on the table, and you go away hungry, it's your fault. I'm going to tell you, God's going to spread the table out this weekend. There's going to be all kinds of things for us to feast on. There's going to be great singing because we got great talent in our church. Uh, there's going to be uh, great youth choir singing, great adult singing. There's going to be special singing. Uh, I mean, it's going to be good singing. Uh, uh, can I say this? And these preachers coming, I mean, they're like a junkyard dog uh, 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 trying to get somebody breaking in. I mean, they're going to be uh, uh, ready to go, ripping and snorting, ready to go. They're going to fling it down. Uh, they've been praying. They've been excited. Every one of them's excited to come. Uh, 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 they're going to let it rip. If you go away without anything, not God's fault, not the church's fault, your fault. So I'm encouraging, get ready for camp meeting. Huh? Come with your bucket turned up right and ready for God to fill it. So can I say getting ready for camp meeting, camp meeting starts tonight. And right now, God's already spoke to some of you. You have seen some of the looks I got a minute ago. And what you need to do is make up your mind right now. I'm having camp meeting. Uh, come hell or high water, I'm having camp meeting. I'm not going to let the devil rob me of it. I'm not going to let the world rob me of it. I'm going to not even let my own selfish desires rob me of it. I need something from God. And I'm going to have it. You need to make up your mind tonight. I'm going to have it. And from now to Friday, Spend some time with God and say, God, I need you. I need camp meeting. I need help. God, send a meeting. Let's all stand, Brother Clint, get a song of invitation. Make up your mind. I need it. I need a touch of God. Uh -uh. Listen, there's nobody in here living wicked and out of the will of God, but we need his touch. We need his help. And it starts tonight. Lord, I need camp meeting. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father. Lord, you know better than we how much we need a move of God. Lord, I long to see folks get saved. I long to see prodigals come home. I long to see the joy restored into your people. Lord, it starts tonight. Lord, we commit this place unto thee. We ask you to hallow it to your name. We ask that, Lord, you wouldn't allow the powers of hell to bind anything up God we pray you'd send camp meeting send a move of God Lord in ways we can't even fathom God touch hearts and lives Lord there may be some coming from far that have come Lord they're about ready to quit I pray that this meeting would re-energize them for the glory of God there may be some coming that are hurting. I pray they'd find a balm of Gilead. There may be some, Lord, that are seeking your face. I pray they wouldn't be disappointed. God, I pray, Lord, you'd meet every need of every heart and life. Lord, I pray you'd fill this place with your glory. I pray that, Lord, you'd do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. God, remove any hindrances. Help us to come in one accord that Jesus would be glorified in the midst. Now, Father, have your will and way now in this invitation. These folks in the altar, bless them, God. Touch them, help them. Those praying in their pews, do the same. God, do a work in our lives. We'll not fail to bow these unworthy heads again and praise you for what you do. Bless now in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.